Hello everyone, today I am in the city of Victoria, British Columbia. Those are the legislature buildings I hope I'm pointing at right there. You may not know this, but Victoria has the highest share of bike commuters in Canada and maybe one of the highest in North America and maybe the most bike friendly city in North America, but at the same time has never quite lived up to its potential. Weird, right? Well, that's what we're looking at today. I'm Tom and this is Shifter, a channel about urban cycling and bike commuting. And if you like this video, please consider subscribing. So how did this mid-sized city in Canada become so great for cycling? A lot of it was the result of some natural amenities here. The climate here is great for cycling. It's pretty flat and the city is pretty dense, especially compared to other North American cities. So distances were short. And in the 90s, there were some great rail trails that were built out to some of the surrounding municipalities. And all those three things combined to make it a great bike city, but it had kind of stalled in the 2000s. But as we'll see today, the city has made some great progress in the last few years, really elevating its cycling game. So let's go check out the city of Victoria. Okay, we are here in downtown Victoria with Ed from Capital Bike. Hi, Ed. Howdy. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. Victoria, for those of you who don't know, is the capital of British Columbia. And how is it as a cycling city? It's pretty good. Could be better. Um, but it's got a lot of good things, a lot of good fundamentals going for it. It's, um, as we're going to see on the ride we're going to do, we've got a wonderful trail system. Uh, that trail system was built in the 90s, uh, made up of old... Uh, so the old rail lines that existed in the early 20th century, were, they did great things for increasing the cycling mode share, uh, number of trips by bike. Uh, Victoria on a whole, I believe, has the highest uh, number of trips by bike for a census metropolitan area in Canada. Uh, of course, what we've seen over the past decade is a bit, a bit of stalling and a bit of slowing down, while other cities like Vancouver and Calgary were building protected bike lane networks. Uh, Victoria didn't start that process until 2017. Uh, so we're starting to catch back up again with um, other places around North America that have been building great uh, protected infrastructure for the past decades. As it's going to take us around Victoria, we're going to see its evolution from maybe a good bike city that had never quite reached its potential into something that's getting closer to that now. Awesome, yeah. Okay, let's go. Okay, this is like uh, ground zero for cycling in Victoria. This is where it all began. So, sort of, yeah. I mean, so this is, uh, this is the Lockside Trail and this is the Galloping Goose Trail. Uh, these two trails uh, used to be old rail lines back in the early 20th century. They were discontinued. So back in the 90s, that was the first efforts by the provincial government and the regional municipal governments to start really developing these trails into proper cycling routes. Greater Victoria does have the highest mode share of cycling in Canada, and these two trails are the primary reason why. So these are great recreational trails. That's how they were intended, but they've also become commuter routes over time. Yeah, definitely. And for, for uh, Bike to Work Week, Go by Bike Week as it's now called, we always set up stations at various points along these trails because this is where you're going to service a lot of the commuter cycling traffic coming into downtown Victoria. Okay, we are at a bridge. What is this bridge? This is the Johnson Street Bridge. Before we had a, we had a blue bridge, it was, uh, it was pretty awful. Uh, graded deck, no multi-use trail, had to share the space with cars, regularly getting past unsafely. So it was a big barrier to safe cycling. So it's completion in 2015 and the construction of the downtown bike lane network has really extended the security and safety and comfort of the trail network now into downtown Victoria. Okay. All right. Next, we're going to go downtown and see what this connects to. Awesome. Okay. So we are at a intersection here with bike lanes going in both directions. And these are fairly new. This is part of the new new-ish downtown network. Yeah. So these are two key components of the downtown network. We now have four uh, lanes, uh, four, uh, four protected bike lanes on the downtown network. Now that if you have access to the trails uh, further out, that you can now safely get yourself from those trails across the Johnson Street Bridge, downtown, get yourself safely around downtown for whatever you need, business, shopping, recreating, social, and get yourself home safely. Uh, no problem. We're also going to be, the city is currently in the process of building out uh, neighborhood routes, which we're going to go on next. So, right, so it's like becoming a, a true bike city. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, great. Okay, we're going to check out something else now. All right, so we're currently on the Richardson Street Bikeway. Uh, they've now converted it from a collector's street with about 3,000 cars a day. Uh, they've put in a number of traffic diversions, speed bumps, and other traffic calming measures to bring the vehicle count around to 500 to 1,000. 
and they've signed it for 30 kilometers an hour. So um, this is the hub and spoke approach that Victoria is pursuing. So they've built the downtown hub of bike lanes and now they are building traffic calm routes like this, the spokes into the communities. Very glad to have it done. I used to actually live on Richardson over a decade ago. Definitely had a series of you know, close passes every now and then. And then as we're going to see in a moment, we'll be approaching uh, the Oak Bay Victoria border and we'll see the infrastructure just kind of disappear just like that. And that's one of the major issues we have here in Victoria in the Capital Regional District is that we have 13 municipalities. Uh, there's a real lack of coordination when it comes to the building of the infrastructure. Uh, and unfortunately, even to the point where some municipalities oppose infrastructure in other municipalities, uh, such was the case here. Uh, where uh, Oak Bay actively opposed the creation of this Richardson Street bikeway because uh, vehicle drivers will be inconvenienced and have to drive to one of two nearby arterial roads to get themselves into downtown Victoria. We're now actually on McNeil Street, so Richardson is changing to McNeil Street, and McNeil Street has been on the bike lane network in Oak Bay for, for over a decade, for about a decade, uh, but there's absolutely nothing that's been done, done with it. Uh, Oak Bay has not built a single, has built one bike lane uh, in the past 20 years, a short, less than a kilometer bike lane. And aside from that, they've done absolutely nothing since then. Okay, well, thanks, Ed. That was a great tour of Victoria. We hit some really interesting spots. What's, what's next for cycling in this city? Well, I think what's next really is uh, we have elections coming up in uh, October. And, you know, like with other places that have installed protected infrastructure and good bike lanes, you know, we see a lot of noise made in the local media. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, very often we see candidates or, you know, incumbents who have supported infrastructure get reelected. So hopefully we'll see the same here in Victoria. Uh, heard from so many people who, you know, weren't keen on the infrastructure, weren't keen on the changes, and they got on a bike and started riding it and realized, hey, this is the future. Yeah, the future is looking pretty promising. Great. So they're, they're, we're standing in the middle of a street right now, a nice cough, traffic calm street with a park bench. So maybe there'll be more of this in the future. Yeah, very hopeful. Yeah, thanks, Ed. That was yeah, great. Pleasure.